Hi, Sam Tober, Sound of Joy Music Services, coming at you a little differently than I normally do, as you can see from my subject matter. Just want to make sure that I can share this feed uh, with another musician group. And let's share with share it with a different group this time. Still musicians. There we go. Okay. Wanna make sure I don't I don't miss anyone who come in. As I said, Sam Tobert, Sound of Joy Music Services. And I'm coming at you a little differently. In kind of a different setting. I've kind of got the lights down here uh, because of the subject matter that I'm going to be covering. Just want to make sure that my feed is going out okay. I'm also creating a YouTube um, uh, video of this same uh, conversation I'd like to have to you tonight. So if you have any questions or comments, I'm watching you on my on my iPhone so I can see if any comments or questions may come in. Subject matter. Finding your first love. Again. Now, of course, I'm talking about music, but you can apply it to whichever you want to apply it to. The very first time that um, I can, in my life, remember hearing tones, hearing music, um, and it actually gr grabbed my attention to where I ran to the piano uh, in, my, in my home. Back in my day, um, most homes would have a, a, um, an actual spinet piano off on the wall someplace. Of course, I come from a, a church family, so my father was a musician. Of course, we had a piano. We weren't supposed to play it when we were small, but when he wasn't there, that's when we would run to it and peck on it until we heard him coming in the door. So my first... Uh, affair with music came from hearing the radio play and listening to gospel songs or songs that would come on the uh, on the radio commercial jingles and they would stay with me that tone the the uh, the production of it would actually linger in my head yes I had to you know be a child and play with toys that, that, that I did have with army men or trucks but when I couldn't get that tone out of my head, I would go to the piano and could not replicate it. I'm going to see who joined. Okay, two or two in so far. Could not replicate it, no matter how hard I tried. And then after a while, it would just fade away until I heard the next tune. Uh, when I would watch TV and, you know, mother would put on the, uh, the cartoons on a Saturday morning, I would see all the different shows. My biggest one was watching um, the, the what we call the Looney Tunes now, the Bugs Bunny, Road Runner, um, Popeye the Sailor Man. Again, tunes that I would hear, and when I had a chance to try and remember them, I would go to the piano, and because I did not have any skill, any training, I could not replicate or duplicate what that sound was. So the love affair with music began at age six, seven, eight watching other people play as I went around to churches with my family, watching my father sit there and play. He wasn't playing the tunes that I was hearing in my, in my head. So I went, well, how you would say it, had a crush on music, but I had no way to express that crush on music. My brother did show me one thing. I shared this before. This is what he shared. That's what my brother shared with me back in those days. He was a much more accomplished musician than I was. He was able to play the tunes that he heard, but he was on he was in demand as a young church musician. So I was still lacking or longing to understand what is this draw that keeps me wanting to get involved, to hear the music that's in my head and then play it out just the way I hear it. You, you know I'm on my site where I posted, I was never trained to play the piano. 
My first introduction to music as a youngster. I used to have it out here. Where is it? I got all the lights out so you can't see all the stuff I only would be have it arm's length. I must have moved it. Oh, here it is. My first introduction to music was this. Now, this is uh, not the exact one I had. I had the more cheaper version. It was plastic. It was black, but it was the same thing. In, uh, I want to say the fourth grade PS6 on East Tremont Avenue in the Bronx, New York, when they handed these out to all the kids in the classroom, and they wanted to see who had musical abilities. I think if I were to try to get a sound out of this, I probably still could. Let's see. Start high. <laughs> Been a while. My first introduction to a love affair uh, that has followed me from age... I'll say age 10 up until now at age 65 plus. That ability to play an instrument and actually replicate notes I could hear in my head. I, these things, these are part of my history. This is where my love started for music. Someone actually showing me how to play and how to, to have the control to be able to play. Make sure I can show this correctly. Yeah, How to have the control to be able to get notes out of this little device. And yes, you can see, if I put, put if I put a good month into this, I can start playing these things I could hear in my head. Let's see, I've had it in my hand now. Let's see, I know what my notes are. It's, it's, it's a C instrument, but it could also play sharps and flats. Let's see if I can do. I'll try and do total praise. get that high. Oh. Thank you. That was the introduction to my love of music, a wind recorder. Now again, not this one, it was much cheaper. It was a black plastic one. Uh, but that introduction to be able to create music has followed me my entire life. Now, when did the piano become prevalent? Not until I had also gone through French horn, mellophone, trombone, my father forced me to try to play the uh, try to play the guitar. I really struggled with that, trying to form those chords. That's why I know how to tune. Let me see. Right, six strings. There it is. Those are the, that's those are the notes to tune a guitar. Tried that could not feel even the bass my father put a bass in my hand thinking I would be a bass player so I would learn how to what me bass uh, there we go those are those are the bass notes but I could not sense uh, the feeling of what it meant to hold so much music in my head and be limited to a device that can only get out certain notes certain sounds so being um, given the opportunity to go and go to from high school where we learned, uh, I learned French on and learned to play different classical songs, going to a high school where I learned to play in a jazz band 
that's when I switched over to the mellophone, a much smaller instrument, E flat instrument, and learned all the stuff in jazz band. Still, I heard all the music we were playing, but I could not duplicate it on the piano. At this time, I had asked my teacher, how do you play piano? He looked at me and he says, well, uh, you got to know the scales. I'm like, well, okay, what's the scale? This is the only thing my music teacher showed me. And he says, I'm going to show you this, but we're not here to teach piano. You're here to play the mellophone. He taught me the scale. This is all he showed me. And then he showed me a song. That's all he did. That's it. He said, now that's all I'm going to show you because you're not here to do that. Let's we'll see who joined. Oh, welcome, Jamil, and welcome, Betty. Uh, where did I come up with the idea to playing walking bass with your foot? Um, this is probably when I was 13. Uh, and of course, my father being a Hammond organ authorized servicer, he would sometimes be bringing organs into his repair shop, which we got a chance to practice on from jazz teams that were you know going around the country and they would drop their organ off to be repaired because of course they would break it up we would fix the foot pedals and again all about taking the foot pedals apart and refurbishing them and then i got a chance to, when he wasn't there again because you couldn't be messing with instruments when you're only 13 or 14 to try and figure out how can i play bass pedals on a foot I'm kind of going past what i'm doing but this is all about the same thing the love of music means what did i have to do to get a hold of everything that I'm hearing musically and then be able to emulate that sound. The foot pedals without socks on was to get to play every note that my left hand could do. If I could do this with my left hand, my, my foot had to be able to do the same thing. Whatever I was doing with my left hand, my foot had to do the same thing. So it would be heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, heel, toe, heel, toe, 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 toe. And I got that high up. Because you can only go so far on a foot pedal on a on a on an ammon organ before your legs crash into each other. So I would practice doing this with my feet, with my hand, and have my feet catching up with it. I do this. Whatever the left hand was doing, my feet had to do at the same speed. And again, I had no instructor to teach me how to play organ. I so, but I used my ability to hear music to emulate what is it that I'm trying to accomplish. If I wanted to do this with my, with my feet, without breaking the uh, the foot pedals, because again, if I broke it, my, I'd be, give, I'd be uh, bring, being brought to question, hey, I just repaired that, why is it broke? And if I did, well, I didn't break it because I was playing without, it, without my shoe on. But I learned how to move my feet as quickly as I thought. So if I want to do this, you know, the old gospel run, I can do that with my feet without even thinking about it. Free my hands up to do everything else. I can... I could do that with my feet. And like anything else, when we talk about loving something or loving, now you go back to from a relationship standpoint, when you want a relationship with somebody, you will find out everything about them that makes them tick so that you will know how to approach them. And you do the same thing with music. What is it about music that when I hear it, I want to be able to play that. I want to be able to sound like the songwriter. I, um, we weren't allowed to play secular music in my home, but it didn't stop it from coming over the radio if you were listening to a channel. So I would listen to when the, well, again, when we weren't being told, turn that radio off, I would listen to songs by the OJ, songs by the Temptations, songs by uh, Mighty Clouds of, Mighty Clouds? What's that song? Mm -hmm.
somebody loved. Those type of songs I would hear, I had to turn the radio off because I wasn't supposed to be listening to it, but then I'd go back in my mind, go, I like that song, I like the chords, I like the words, the lyrics, and how they, how they mastered it all together. Then I would have to go to the organ or to the piano, I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone, and then try to emulate that. So, you know, was I trained to be a church musician? No. I was trained to play classical music, 1812 Overture. I had to play that, or the um, uh, Caribbean, Calypso, Calypso music, big band sound, which you, you see a lot of my playing. That's why I fell in love. Who joined us? Welcome, uh, Makia, and welcome, uh, Duckinson. That's why I fell in love with the big band sound. The my high school music teacher, uh, named Mr. Alexander Altieri, was a trumpeter. He played. Um, trying to remember he used to go up to the Catskills every summer and play with 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 his own band he loved introducing us to all kinds of music he says you want to become a well-rounded musician then you got to learn how to play everything and yes we played marching music and we played um we were doing the marching music we actually marched in the Bronx one time uh, our band was so well known that we were invited to march uh be a marching band on a Bronx day I think in, in back in New York but this is, again, this is all goes into that love of, that first love. My first love, as I showed you, was my introduction to music that I so desperately wanted to learn through a device like this, where I now could create a sound. Yes, you, if you saw the earlier ones, uh, I, it squeaked a little bit because I haven't really put my time in it like I used to. But once I got comfortable and knowing how, to, what, how much pressure to apply, and how much air to apply and then just calming myself to be able to hit those notes like I wanted to when I did the total praise thing it came right out and yes again I'm not gonna pick up the French horn because that that was an, a difficult instrument for me to, to play but I was able to perform as I, as was re re required of me but when I began to to look at my first love which is how can I get this sound that has come into my ears how do I get it out of my ears, out of my head, and onto a keyboard? Once I had an understanding of what a scale was, what a chord was, high, middle, low, lower, 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 high, 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 higher, higher. Once I got that understanding, now I could go and articulate. What am I hearing? Now pick I love you Lord today. Without sheet music now I'm doing this. Because I hear it. If that's what I hear in melody alone. As a as a instrumentalist, I would only, I could only be I could only play single notes. So if I had to play this on that flutophone on this, if I had to play that on this, again I don't mind showing you because this is what I'm trying to say. Getting back, hey, welcome, Jackie. This was where where, where that love started. I can't get that low, so I got to change the key. so I can find it. That should be in there. Got to calm myself.
as you can see, I haven't forgotten my first love. It takes a discipline um, when you want to form a relationship, even with a person, you have to be able to discipline yourself to overcome the, that's the shyness. You know, was I ever afraid to play that? As you saw, I closed my eyes when I started playing. That's because I made myself one with the instrument. I wasn't looking at the camera. I wasn't trying to worry about, am I going to play the right notes? Because back when I was when I started my first love affair with music, that was the that pounded my heart to be able to articulate without reading sheet music where the notes are on that instrument and then just play it. So when I do that on a piano, especially when I when I'm instructing like this I do on the internet, I'm trying to I'm trying to to share close join. I'm trying to share that love for music with a a family of musicians who maybe look at music as you know they use the term it's a gig it's where I go get my paper um, it's a it's something to do when I'm not doing something else for me when we did not have internet we didn't have cable TV God forbid we were lucky to get the the eight channels we had before they started shutting down at, at nine o'clock by that time we were in bed anyway so the space for me to learn music and to begin to begin to try to embrace it was the window was so short and trying to hold it in the mind of a eight, nine, ten year old when you've got seven other <laughs> family members around you and a mother and father. It, you know, it, it was it took a discipline. Once I felt the freedom of of of, of being able to learn music and see who, who joined us. Welcome, Mr. Uh, brother, uh, Mr. David, David Bishop. So when I began to expand on in on the piano, because I because I was in a jazz band, I sat in the middle of saxophones, trombones. To my right was clarinets, clarinets and oboe. They had the higher notes. Trumpets were in back of me. I was in the middle with the, as, as a mellophone player, I had, again, the saxophones and the trombones and one guy bass in the bottom. So I was surrounded. I was surrounded by all the music and I was in the middle. So when you see me play, this is me. These are the clarinets and the, and the oboes above me and the, and the piccolo. We had one piccolo player. It's the out the trombones and the saxophones and the one bass guy behind us. So we used to have this thing we'd always do every morning for rehearsal, what we called a concert C. And you sound, sometimes you hear this when 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 um, orchestras are warming up. Everybody's playing their note, their concert note. In my today I still hear that in my head. Who joined? Oh my wife joined. Welcome dear. I still hear that in my head where I can hear everybody. I'm playing my concert E flat, which is a C in the middle. Then of course you would get the con the conductor would start. And then we would start turning our pages to the song, the music we want to be practicing at that time. But all of that en engulfment in music still stays with me some 50 plus years later as if you watch me warm up I will do this bottom middle all the way to the top and I will go I will still do that why because there is a love of music that you know for those, I'm not, I've watched the comments, especially those here on the group here that I have tagged in. When I hear a musician post, you know, I don't feel this anymore. Um, you know, I feel like giving up because, you know, the music is not 
is not doing anything for me. I, I, I look at that and sometimes I, I hesitate writing. Sometimes lately now I have been sort of chiming in on that. But it lets me know that as a musician, you've never been in love. You've never been so wrapped by music that says, hey, there are a million songs out there I've never heard. Let me learn 10 songs this month that I've never played before and see how well what those songs do to me. I just listened to a song today. I can't share much of the chords from it, but I saw it on a YouTube video and I said, you know what? That sounds like gospel to me. So I went and I pulled it up and I said, oh yeah, I know this song. I know those chords. I use them all the time. It was an R&B song. I'm not gonna say what it was because I don't want to get a strike against me. I'll just share some of the chords. I'll just share some of the chords. I'm going to share but when I delved into the song on YouTube I go yeah I, I remember these chords I don't play them anymore why because I shifted my music into the genre of music that I was supposed to learn the hymns let me see Because I shifted my attention from those chords that I heard as a youngster listening to the radio into playing the songs that I'm required to play because of the, and I'll use that term, the actual job. But I never lost that love. I'm now in a, in a, in a mode of, I want to get back to some of those songs that I was, was taboo to play. You know, as a musician, you're not going to be playing R&B chords, you know, or quote unquote chords that are not that are worldly chords and I think we we love to tag something to, to hold power over a person you know as I've told people a chord in C is the same chord in, in a in a in a gospel song is the same chord in a jazz song is the same chord in a classical score song it's how you want to, how you want to approach that song so I never say oh you shouldn't learn this chord you should never do this chord you should never feed it here you should never do that. Hey, it's just chords. And when you can embrace music to the point where you go, gee, I want to learn. But now as I look at it, I'm, I'm now selling myself down to hearing what I'm doing. began to now hear the song in its purest form as a, a trained musician first learning to play would have done now I went past because I never was trained to play that song but I began to add all the things that I that I that I would endure 
from listening to so many different approaches to different songs? How do I just go and start building on that song? I can hear it I can hear it better than I can if I had sheet music in front of me restricting me to only be here when you do when you got sheet music that's all you can you can apply to it but when you have a love for music now you take that love and you you make love to it That's what I mean by finding your first love again. You started in this music path because you had a love for what you heard. And those of us that had the opportunity to get an instrument underneath our hands, some people went to uh, singing. I never, I, I, I wasn't on the chorus, thank God. I probably would have left music if they would have sent me the chorus back in uh, back in, in junior high school, but I was able to because of my ability to play a flute. I was immediately placed on the trombone, clef, left hand right, I think left or right hand. Got to remember what shoulder I put it on. Right hand. There we go. Uh, scale. Wow. Long times I did trombone. Didn't like that. They moved me from there to French horn. I was the only French horn player in the school. Thus, they gave me 1986. I still have it in my uh, basement down here. They gave me the French horn because I was the only French horn player. And I even questioned. Um, it says Board of Ed on this. They said, no, no, you, this is yours. I still have it to this day. That's how engrossed I became. Anything that gave me the ability to do music, I... That's right. I, I did do drums too. My father tried to do me on drums. It wasn't music, so I never got comfortable with it. Yeah, I could, you know, rattle a couple of things off on it, but it wasn't music. It was just noise. But anything that allowed me to expand on that first love I had of, of music was what I, I did. I see those that are in here. Again, I'm always looking for, for questions. Questions just so I can, I can answer anything. Because I think sometimes... Musicians, they hold all that emotion of music in them, and they wait till one day a week or twice a week if they're in a music service to let it all out. And really, you should be letting it out every time you sit and you sit down and play. I have over 700 and I think I lost count, but 750 videos on YouTube, and each one of them sounds differently. It was a different time period when I did the recording, a different instrument that I was playing on. But one thing you won't hear differently is my passion to what I was doing with that at that time. Most of the time when I do a video, it's one take. If I hear bad mistakes in it, sometimes I say, you know what, but if I was feeling something when I was playing it, I want that to be felt too. I think we try to become too perfect. We, we use sequenced uh, tracks now to start a song because we want it to sound, uh, sound so perfect. And that takes away the love. I mean, what relationship is perfect? There's always going to be bumps in any kind of natural relationship. So in your music, if you're trying to do everything perfect that, at that one particular time, you know, I, I leave when I do some of my tracks, I'll hear the mistake. I'll go in and I'll cut it short or I'll change the note or I'll redo it if I'm doing a track for someone. But if I'm playing for myself, I want you to hear. Oh, I missed the note there. It should have been that note. But I went here. 
but this is what I was feeling that time. That's what I was feeling. If I feel it, in other words, if I hear it and it registers at the time that I'm feeling it, my hands have to respond, which is why I, I stress so much musicians, I want to make sure I'm still being heard, I stress so much for musicians to practice the scales. Why? Because you can hear something like that, but if you're not ready to go and jump on it, that moment is gone. How many times have you played in a service and you get commented, oh, you, the Lord was really using you today, and you're like, where? If you don't have a recording of it to play it back, you'll never know what happened at that moment that person heard that song. And that's one of the things that, um, make sure I'm not missing any, miss, missing any, any comments. Okay, Jackie, take care. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. At that moment and at that time, you struck a chord in someone at that moment, at that time, that maybe they were feeling bad that day, but because you played that chord, you played that chord in the way that you played it. It, it actually resonated in that person, and whatever a frown was, a smile came upon them because they heard you play it. I've always tried to downplay playing so much music because I never wanted to be I never wanted to be the attraction. No one came to church just to hear me play. They came to hear the choir sing, which means I had to play below the choir singing, and they came to hear the preacher preach. So unless he tuned up late or early, I had to then stay below where he was and not be the be the star of the show. If I wanted to be the star of the show, then they should sponsor me in, in a in my own um what's the word I want to do? In my own uh show, or what do you call, we call those things, program, have me sponsor the program so I can play the organ as loud as I want to and do all these tricks you know, to try to impress people or try to impress other musicians. I always try to play within myself knowing that if I want to do this, if I want to do this in a song, I could, but then I would take away from whatever, whoever was singing. Uh, generally when I play for a soloist, they lead, I accompany. Sometimes I follow if I'm not sure where I'm going. If a, if a soloist is singing, and you've seen some of my videos, I'm going to see if I can pick a song. I'm still in the key of C, right? I'm letting you see my what I'm doing on the... Let me go to D flat. What, what you see there? So if a soloist is singing um, His Eyes on the Sparrow. That's too high. find it because usually it's not done in C, it's done in, it's done in A flat. But you could be a soloist who, who likes that range. So then I would have to know the song, melody as you see it, the melody wise, knowing that it's in this range, know where the highest note is in that song, if you join this, and then be able to accompany them. So if they're going to sing down here, I can't be up here. If they're singing down here, then I have to find a, a comfort spot. My jazz. If that's a jazz change. I'm sorry, classical. I want you to see that chord. Here's the jazz chord. Jazz chord. A jazz chord. Again, this is a gospel song, but because it is written during a time of jazz chords, they all fit. That's my space. Now the singing tree are cons. You gotta know 
that change is coming up. That's that classical, that's, that's that gospel. Now I can go, I can go straight. Or I can go, again, trying to figure out. This is all while I'm, while a person is singing, I'm hearing every one of these changes in my head and choosing which one I'm going to use based upon who's singing, how they're getting across the song, and where we are in the song. Is I, I is on the sparrow. Because I know it's going to go down, so I can't be up here. He watched it. Now I already used that one chain. I used a drop down already, so now I got to go a different way. B chords. Gospel. And I know he watches me. Classical. I sing. Again, music, when you fall in love, you want to give it your best every time you play. That's why when I hear, and I want, the, and I want musicians that, that, that do watch this over to understand what, I'm, where I'm, what my approach is. When you fall in love with your music, you hear what's not there. I'm playing a song behind a melody throwing chords I don't normally use because I hear them while I'm doing this this live. I sing. I don't normally do that. This is what I'm happy. Felt classical at that time. Where do I go? <laughs> Gospel or jazz. I'm trying to hold these calls so you can catch them from me. Is on. This is a this is a jazz chord. Diminished, right? Z flat diminished seventh. Add those chords on it. But we try, we, we try to call it something else. We call, oh, this is a gospel chord. No, this is a diminished chord used in jazz. Back. I'll go a little contem contemporary, knowing where, where, the, where the soul is going is where the soul is going to go. Is watch in me. Now, if we at the end of the song. I really go full out. His eye is on the span. When the solo sings down, I have to be where they are. I hear the chord changes in my head because I practice all these changes as, you know, I would dare tell you I don't practice. 
I'm practicing now as I'm doing this because as I'm making this up as I go and I hear the changes in my head and because I've practiced jumping around because I know what a D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D flat sounds like, where those chords are found before my hand falls, it knows, move. Because I love what I do with music. I want to make sure I haven't missed anyone. I've lost my chat. I think I can see it from the other side. So, if there are any questions, I didn't mean to go along with this. Yeah, 46 minutes into it now. I just want to help musicians to understand this is a love affair. This is something where it's only you and the instrument that you have in front of you. If you're a drummer, it's you and the drums. If you're a bass player, it's you and your bass. If you're a guitar player, it's you and your guitar. If you're a trumpet player, it's you and your trumpet. If you uh, play the trombone, it's you and your trombone. It's just you and the instrument. It's not you, somebody else, and then the instrument, but it's you and that instrument. And when you love something uh, that intensely, you won't take time to practice. You'll make time. You turn the phone off. You'll stop looking at YouTube. You know, you'll stop. You may use your phone to record yourself so that you can hear what you sound like so that the next time you can sound better. I share my chords for one reason. I don't plan on taking them with me to the grave. I don't. I don't want to take everything that I've learned since... I put this in my mouth back when I was eight years old, ten years old. I don't want to take all that with me. When I'm gone, this is going to wind up in the trash somewhere to be discarded, thrown into a trash heap. All these keyboards, if no one takes it, they'll be thrown into a trash heap and either recycled or buried forever. What I have in here, if I don't share it with you and share it with others, you know, I'm, I'm working towards trying to get all the music I've done on paper that I've out of my head and I've got it on paper and I've shared with different churches and different choirs I'm trying to get that out there so that I can leave something for that next musician that says the next one that says I, I don't know what to practice I, I don't have an instructor I want to change my key let's go to E flat I don't have anyone who will show me chords. I was watching, um, I'm sure we all love to see Kevin Carter when he puts up his videos and he put up one where um, he was demonstrating what happens to what certain musicians do when someone enjoys what they're playing and they ask them, hey, show me what you did there. And all of a sudden the conversation, the tone of the conversation changes. I, I had to chuckle because I felt that. I went through that as a young musician in the church when I, when the more established musician was playing and here I am 10, 11 years old, I go up to the organ and I want to say, can you show me how to do that? And they would hide their, their hands all of a sudden, went all the way away from my eyesight while they're still doing what they're doing. Or they would stop playing. And I could not understand at 11, 11, or 12, yeah, 11 12 years old, why he wouldn't show me how he did that. I could not understand that. Oh, don't worry. If you just keep practicing, you know, God is going to give it to you. And I'm like, but you have it now. You can get me started. You can help me help me build that love I have of this music. So if you've watched the over 750 videos I have on YouTube, I'm sharing what no other musician would share with me. What is that chord you're playing? How do you use it in the song? How are you doing it? What are you feeling when you do that chord? What are you feeling, thinking right there? How do you do that? What are you doing?
What's that change? How do you do that roll? How do you do, how do you get from one side of the keyboard effortlessly without crashing into it? That's what love will do. You'll want to share what you're feeling. Some guys, now you, I'll, I, I will say this. I'm trying to see the comments, get to heaven, no comments there. Some musicians are jealous of the music that they've, that they've learned. Excuse me, I'm trying to keep up with any comments. They are jealous of what they, they feel that this is their love and I can't share it with anyone because if I share it with you, you run and take it someplace else and now I won't have it anymore. I have no fear of what I've learned in my years as a young musician, uh, teenage musician, adult musician, uh, full adult musician, and now a senior musician. I have nothing, you know, if you take it from me and do better with it than I did, I applaud you. Because you didn't take my love away from me. You, you haven't taken the ability that I, that I like to be able to sit and create, be creative. You didn't take that from me. I was able to share with you a part of the music love that I had. So will I ever lose my love for music? No. I want to encompass and include as many musicians, singers, songwriters, composers in this uh, frame of love that I have that says if you wrote a song but I can't, you can't sing. I know I can't sing but I can hear the notes and articulate it on a piano or have someone who can, who's a better vocalist than I, I am to articulate it. I want to be able to share that so they can, you can feel what I feel. So when I do a chord, I want you to hear every note and show you every note that I'm playing. Let me see. Turn off those lights. So you can see that I'm not hiding anything from you. This is the chord I'm playing. How am I using that chord? If I was doing Mary Had a Mary Had a Little Lamb. So that you're not worried about how do you get that chord? A little because I can't sing a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. But you see that. Whose face was turn right, turn around as snow. I make it up as I go, as I hear it in my head. The keyboard allows me to uh, project what I hear. And this is the way that I show my love for music. And I've been doing this since the age of, I'll say, 13, 14, when I began to get a full understanding of how to get out of my head that love for music and then share it with those that listen. I'm going to bring this to a close. Um, as again, I'm doing this not only on my Facebook Live, but also I will be sharing this on my YouTube page. Um, this is part of the, the concept that I'm, um, new concept that I'm working on, trying to get more intimate with what I'm doing music-wise. Sometimes, as I say, over 700 plus videos, and some of the videos are actually showing the same techniques that I've used for years and the new ones that I'm learning. I'm getting back in touch with those songs that um, in my younger days I couldn't play. I can only hear them and, and absorb them. Uh, they got pushed aside as I became more proficient in playing church music. It was just no place for them being inundated with so much music as a youngster and as a teenage years. But I'm looking at getting back through the magic of YouTube get back to some of those songs and play them and try to feel that love that I once had for a different genre of music. Uh, get that back again because 
it's all the same music. I think we we try to put a tag on everything: what's good, bad, and different. What's what's right, what's wrong. No, nothing no, nothing ever wrong with love. Even the Bible speaks of love between friends, between uh, uh, husband and wife. Uh, the no greater love has no man that he would give his life for his friend. What kind of love is? what we extend to people or those who have a love of animals, who have a love of um, cooking. <laughs> Shout out to my, to, my, to my daughter, the chef. You pour your love into something because you want to get something back from it. I pour my love into music because what it gives me, I want to share with everyone. Sam Tobert, Sound of Joy Music Services. I love music. I love sharing it. And I'm looking to, as I incorporate additional singers if you're watching my youtube channel you see that i'm bringing on a singer um Rebora, to help me in getting my other music that i've you've never heard that's still on paper getting that out to you and i will be incorporating some other singers also to help get a if not a trio of four or five people that'll come together and create a different sound to add to that wonderful sound that is out there right now again sam tobit sound of joy music services thanks for allowing me into your homes into where you are around the world be blessed and keep looking up find that first love again it's still there take care